Back with Gary on Dorian ASEAN, we're moving on to our Blast from the Grassroots session. And today's topic is The Road Not Taken. And I have Mr. Keith Nair with me, who is a beer ambassador with Guinness Anchor Berhad. So, hello, Keith. How are you doing? Fine, thank you, Gary. Thanks how for is, having how me. How's your morning? Uh, so far, so good. Started off with a bang and hopefully it continues. Okay. So, uh, I read that you've been, uh, you've been doing a lot, actually. You are a mixologist, you are a beverage innovation manager, and you're a beer ambassador now. So, you want to give us a little history, how you got started on this? Oh, huh. okay. Where do I start? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I started off uh, um, as a waiter, um, okay. w- working in a restaurant, uh, TJ Fridays. Mm-hmm. This was uh, when I was... Barely working age. Um, I'll not say anything further. Uh, it started off on the floor, and um, before I knew it, uh, I found myself behind the bar because uh, someone didn't show up for work as usual. Okay, when you uh, said behind the bar for a moment, I thought you were in prison. Um, no, no, the, the the fun bar. <laughs> So um, I started off um, uh, clearing glasses, you know, uh, doing bar bag jobs uh, for about six months to a year. And uh, I found my passion in uh, traveling, which is uh, quite strange because um, if you start off as a bartender, you usually don't make that much money. So it's very difficult to, uh, to travel. So mm-hmm. I started joining bar competitions. Uh, that's where I got into flaring. Uh, mixology was quite in-depth as well. And uh, the rest, they say, is history. Because uh, after I, I finished uh, with uh, TGI Fridays, I was approached by this French uh, liqueur company called uh, Monan, or okay. Monin in English. Um, and then I was a uh, beverage innovation manager. Uh, yes, it's a, it's an actual role. Okay. Uh, so what I used to do is I used to travel around uh, uh, Southeast Asian countries, uh, namely Thailand, Singapore, mm. Indonesia, Vietnam, Myanmar, and the Philippines. Okay. Uh, conducting cocktail workshops uh, and doing mixology classes uh-huh. uh, before I found myself in uh, Guinness Anchor Berhad, which is today. So when you say beverage innovation manager, uh, do you actually invent new drinks? Uh, yes, because uh, we had a, a, a vast portfolio of uh, liqueurs and syrups. Uh, around uh, the last time I was there was about 134 flavors. Mm-hmm. So uh, usually what happens is uh, specific markets, like for example, uh, Thailand will be very accustomed to lemongrass. So I would have to come okay. up with uh, various beverages uh, containing lemongrass, uh, liqueur, or syrup. Mm. So if it's, for example, uh, if it's a high-end uh, hotel, then uh, those, those cocktail recipes will be very, uh, ha- will have to be of a very high standard. Okay. And uh, as opposed to uh, if it's uh, something for the masses, like in a food mm. service chain in Singapore, for example, then it will be a very uh, simple and easy to make uh, concoction. So can I hold you responsible for all the bizarre cocktail names out there? Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> for a few and in okay. a few countries, yes. So what are the countries that have uh, accepted your recipes maybe? And um, well, uh, to date, uh, which is still running, uh, mm-hmm. the Marina Mandarin in uh, Singapore. Okay. Uh, they have a cocktail menu which has about six uh, recipes which are um, created by me. Oh, okay. Um, in uh, Indonesia, there are about three or four bars mm-hmm. and if I'm not mistaken, about seven or eight hotels. Uh, because they they have uh, large hotel groups over there. Mm -hmm. And um, in Malaysia, uh, namely food service chains, and uh, also uh, bars and restaurants. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... uh what are you currently doing with GAB? Oh, um, right now I'm the uh, GAB Professional Solutions uh, Manager okay. uh, slash uh, GAB Portfolio Brand Ambassador. So basically, it's a it's a dual role. Uh, uh-huh. The first portion on uh, GAB PS for short, uh, we are basically responsible for product and service quality for mm-hmm. the portfolio. So, for example, uh, if uh, Heineken or Tiger is running a, a, a world class uh, activation in terms of quality, uh, we are basically the guide from the moment the beer leaves the brewery gates uh-huh. through to the end consumer. So okay. um, f- in terms of like frontline staff, we do mm-hmm. uh, product trainings. Uh, it runs for a full calendar year. Uh, right up to the uh, global finals where we, we pick out the top performing uh, uh-huh. bartender and we send him or her to uh, Amsterdam for oh. for the Heineken Global okay. Bartender Finals. All right. Yep. So can you tell us uh, maybe a day in your life? Uh, how does it start? 
Uh, oh, okay. To how, how does it, it start? Okay, well, it starts uh, relatively early in the morning. Okay. Uh, well, mo- most of the paperwork is uh, pretty much done. Uh-huh. Um, it can range from uh, consulting for, from the internal brand teams to come up with uh, beer cocktails. It can... Uh, uh, it can also go on to our, our training programs, mm-hmm. um, as well as a lot of our consultancy services, which uh, we are basically like an like an in-house consultant for the brands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, maybe you can explain to us some of the differences between uh, mixology, or maybe at first what mixology is, and then mm-hmm. how is it different from bartending? Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, um, okay. To be honest, our uh, mixology it's a uh, it, it's a high level name for bartender. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, essentially, uh, I, I guess your your question would be uh, um uh, what are the differences between flat bartending and bartending, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So for 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 bartending, essentially, it's um when you work behind the bar, it's you are responsible for not just uh, concocting recipes. Uh, not just serving your customers, but also um, looking out for their best interests. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, this will come into play when you when you talk about dealing with intoxicated guests. Okay. Um, how do you manage situations like that? Uh. Um, from when you say mixologist, uh, usually when they have uh, mixology competitions, solely mm-hmm. it's solely based on. Uh, the concoction itself. So the, okay. in terms of ingredients, uh, the balance, the taste, the flavour and how you present it. Flair bartending, however, um, it's a slightly different route. You still produce recipes, you concoct beverages, but uh, a lot of emphasis is given on uh, the, the flair or the presentation of it. Okay. So, like, so like, for example, if I'm going to uh, prepare a... Um, okay, name, name me a cocktail. What's your favourite cocktail? My favourite cocktail. Yeah. I have a lot. Okay, so pick <laughs> okay, one. Maybe um, a sidecar. A sidecar, okay. So if so which is basically a brandy, triple sec, lemon juice and a bit of sugar, right? Wow, okay. So if I'm gonna make a sidecar for you, mm-hmm. um, I would uh, toss the the bottle of brandy up in the air and uh, do a couple of stunts, right? Okay, before okay. making the pour. So mm-hmm. by the end of that performance you will basically have a completed sidecar on top of the bar right. in front of you. Yeah. So that's flare bartending. Do so, you do bar, uh, flair bartending? Yes, uh, I was involved in uh, various competitions over the years, okay. um, and that that was one of the the inspirations which got which got me to travel because right. um, when you win like uh, flair competitions, especially mm-hmm. the they have regionals and national finals, which will uh, take you across shores. Right. Uh, so have you won any? Uh, um, well, the the most notable ones uh, would definitely be the uh, uh, TJF World uh, Bartender Championship, which okay. was uh, held in uh, Beijing. Uh-huh. Uh, that encompassed uh, an intensive uh, speed round where you have to make like five different drinks in ninety oh. seconds. Wow! Yeah, and it's random. They don't they don't tell you what you're gonna make. It's it's like a real life situation, and you have a, a twelve minute routine where you have to meet and greet your guests slash judges at okay. the bar, and you have to flare and and present those drinks in the most creative way Mm -hmm. and the best man wins (laughs) that was one Uh, so we came in uh, I came in third place uh, right right behind uh, Japan and the Philippines Uh, the good news is we beat the rest of the world which is uh, Middle East and Asia Pacific oh okay yeah Uh, before that um, the the most uh, uh, exhilarating competition I've been for uh, Mm -hmm. would be the 42 Below uh, Cocktail World Cup um, there was a cocktail world. Yes, <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, okay. I, I was quite shocked to find that out myself. Mm. Uh, Where was this held? Uh, it was in Queenstown, New Zealand. Okay. <clears throat> so it was a it was a six day uh, competition mm. where they basically coupled extreme uh, uh, sports with bartending. So we had six challenges. Uh, the first one being the uh, uh, Cosmo bungee jump, which okay. basically means um, there is a bar on top of a of the Kowara Bridge. <clears throat> Sorry, and you have to uh, mix your cosmopolitan into your cocktail glass. Mm-hmm. They strap on your legs and you bungee jump while holding your glass and your cocktail shaker oh, while the okay. judges are seated in a boat uh, on the river and you go up and down and if you still have the glass and shaker in your hand, mm-hmm. you pour it and serve it to the judges. So the yeah. the one we won, uh, we, uh, we meaning uh, the Southeast Asian team, I was okay. paired up with uh, uh, two girls from Thailand mm-hmm. and uh, myself from Malaysia. Uh, was the uh, jet boat event uh, where basically we were... Um, are you familiar with a lot of the rings? Yeah. 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 Okay, so do you know the River Anduin? Right. Yeah, so that was where they actually had the, the jet boat, which oh. goes at about 180 kilometers per hour. Okay. And uh, again, you know, you pre-mix your cocktails uh, mm. on the shore. You get into the boat and you're seated right at the back and you have to shake, stir and strain and serve 
to the judges sitting in front of the boat okay. if your glass is still uh, in your hands. All right. So yeah. So speaking of girls, are there a lot of girls uh, who are into bartending, fair, fair um, bartending? There, there are, but mm-hmm. uh, I would, I, I strongly wish there would be more okay. because uh, I, I guess in in the past when this this whole flair uh, bartending uh, revolution started, it mm-hmm. was uh, uh, it was very male dominated. Okay. Uh, but now we can see, like especially when there are a lot of like mixology competitions and flair competitions, mm-hmm. I've seen more in mixology as opposed to flair. Okay. And uh, and to be very frank, I think uh, they're going to be taking over very soon. Oh, really? Yes. So, in order to be a mixologist, do you have to start out as a bartender? Uh, yes, you definitely have to start out okay. as a bartender. And uh, I mean, the, the basic fundamentals mm. uh, would definitely come from uh, bartending. And then usually what happens is um, that bartender will either uh, venture into flaring okay. or uh, he or she will go into mixology. So mixology, right. I mean, it, it's more, it's, it's very delicate. It's more of an art where, uh, it, as same goes to flaring. Mm-hmm. So when, when I say I think uh, our women are the next... Uh, uh, they are the future of mixology I would, because you know it's it's very similar to um, do you do you cook at home? I don't cook. Do? Okay, I well it, it's it's kind <laughs> okay it, it's similar to uh, to cooking. I okay. mean it, it's just about uh, the the combination of ingredients and how you use uh-huh. it. So uh, mixology essentially is the same thing. It's how you mm-hmm. you combine those ingredients and flavors and and how it's reflected in your end product, right. which is your drink. Well, it's very much like directing a theatre, I would say. Uh, yes, theatre in <laughs> a glass, the, definitely. The story and the actors and all, you have this recipe. Okay. Yeah, it, re- it really Just comes Making comes up together. for the lack of my cooking skills. <laughs> so, uh, moving on to uh, the industry itself, did mm-hmm. you need to have any paper qualifications or was it more experience-based? Um, I would say it's uh, definitely the combination of both. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, my Paper qualification essentially is uh, is hospitality, okay. but uh, it's very broad. It covers a, a whole vast a, a bunch of topics which mm-hmm. are related, and some which are useful for you if you're running a business. All right. So, um, but essentially, if you're talking about about hard skills, definitely it's experience. Okay. Soft skills, uh, it it surely helps, uh, mm-hmm. especially you know if you if if you study something which you're interested in, because most most people will either uh do uh, you know they'll get a degree or a masters in something which is entirely uh, uh, irrelevant to what they're doing right mm-hmm. now. Like for me, I try and, and do that in tandem. Okay. So far, I've almost veered off course, but I'm still on track. Right. So yeah, it's, it's really good. So uh, what do you think of the quality of bartenders in Malaysia? Um, I think uh, compared to uh, when I first started, mm-hmm. um, a, lot, a lot of talent um, has uh, left the country okay. and a lot of good talent Even is up Even in bartending? The... Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> okay, it's, it's crazy, so right? <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mean, a lot of people always say that, yeah, uh, in terms of staff turnover and all mm-hmm. that, it's very high in various countries and it, it's, it's a fact. And a lot of people always say that, you know, in the Malaysian hospitality industry, Industry, it's uh, we, are, we are so backdated and mm-hmm. all that, and I I don't think that's the case. Okay. Personally, I, I think we are already on the map. It's mm-hmm. just that we have to own something, um, you know, be it hospitality, be it service, be it quality, mm-hmm. and uh, the the level of uh, uh, bartending in in this uh, country can be really improved because, mm-hmm. namely, um, most people look at it as a job. You should always look mm-hmm. at it as a profession because you know, regardless of what you do, okay. the service industry will always be there uh-huh. you know so it's just it's just where are you going to carve out that that space for you okay yeah how how did your parents react to this? I'm a bit curious. Uh, okay, <laughs> well, uh, conventionally, um, because I started working first before mm-hmm. I, I I studied, and um, they were usually quite shocked uh, because uh, they were a bit worried that I would not uh-huh. uh, get a decent job because most of the time, you know, when you say, oh, I'm going to work in a restaurant or a bar, yeah. it's always, oh, okay, because you're waiting for something else yeah, or you know, something thing. to pass time and all that. When, you know, in actual fact, I started off being a waiter because I was actually waiting for something else oh, okay. as a part-time job. But I, I saw that, that that opportunity and it was in line with my passion and I, mm-hmm. and I just took it. And yeah, dealing with the extended family on, you know, right. It's always the, are you a lawyer, doctor, engineer, or, you know? <laughs> did they want you to be a doctor? Um, I, they, they probably did, you know, something, uh, okay. you know, which, which they can proudly, you know, uh, share Tell within people. the family. Yeah, you know, but, <laughs> but essentially, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy that I, I made that, that decision in the past mm-hmm. and, um, and I'm still going strong. So, uh, 
when your mom mm-hmm. let's say introduces you to her friends or what like oh this is my son he's like a beer ambassador do you get uh well funny? she she says uh, i i i work for a brewery so yeah okay. so she mentions like you know Pinot Sanko Berhat so uh, yeah and and uh, when i when i first told her that you know my role as being an ambassador you know she was mm-hmm. she was a bit uh it kind of piqued the interest uh, okay. and you know i until until now i'm you know i'm still explaining my roles uh to you know people i meet because you know Okay. Every time I meet someone new, the first half an hour it's about explaining my role. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't blame them. You are actually doing something very different. Um. From... Yes. Uh, re- I. Uh, you could say that. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, because uh, I would say that uh, being an ambassador for any brand, uh, to that matter, uh, for uh beverage companies, mm-hmm. it's uh it's picking up. Uh, and there are more and more uh, ambassadorial roles uh, okay. out there. Yeah. Compared to where they were in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what do you think are the skills or qualities that you need to have to get into this this oh, business? Skills and qualities. Okay, the first one would be uh, the virtue of patience. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because uh, um, especially in the service line, you know, it's very easy just to lose your cool. And you know, if if you're uh-huh. a waiter or a bartender, right. uh, the second thing would definitely be uh, you need to have passion for it. Okay. Because if the moment you know you're you're doing something which you do not believe in, it's mm-hmm. very hard to excel, yeah, especially right. in this line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, lastly, I would say is you have to be focused and really determined. Because okay. you know it's very easy to get discouraged, you know, especially with a lot, a lot of uh, you know offers, mm-hmm. you know, coming in left, right, and center. Mm-hmm. If you lose focus, mm-hmm. in the end, you'll end up having a lot of uh, small experiences right. all over the place. Yeah. Did the tailors teach you that? Um, well, <laughs> tailors, uh, I'm just tailors. Kidding. I saw your, your video on the young achievers. Oh, so. oh that that was quite fun actually. That was yeah. quite fun. Yeah. So you're saying Taylor? Uh, yeah, it's uh um I started off actually, my intention uh at Taylor's was uh actually to to do my diploma and high diploma. Okay. I didn't expect to do my degree uh okay. namely because of uh, financial constraints. Mm-hmm. Um so during my third year um I knew the only way for me to actually get my degree was uh-huh. to uh, get a scholarship. Okay. So I basically had very little or probably mm. no sleep at all for the last year oh, uh, right. to get award, uh, to be awarded that scholarship and okay. I actually finished my, my degree. Okay. So yeah, and after that, yeah, the rest is history. Okay. <laughs> so I read that you also uh, won this Heineken Draught Master title. Mm-hmm. And is it true that there are only three people in Malaysia who has ever won that? Yes, that's right. Uh, last year, uh, there, uh, there was a Heineken Draft Masterclass okay. where basically what uh, what what they do is they gather all the uh, quality uh, advisors from all the all the countries. Uh-huh. So there were a total of uh, there's a total of thirty five of us globally. Mm-hmm. So during this uh, this six day uh, intensive course, which uh, ends with a, a test, uh, you are uh, you you go through rigorous uh, quality standards uh, so they basically you know you will go through the brand history the, the art of pouring and mm-hmm. at the end um, how you're evaluated is not um, how well you can actually pour or serve or explain how a, a perfectly per- per- perfectly crafted Heineken mm-hmm. is it's whether your target audience understands and they are able oh. to to pour a perfect Find a Heineken just the way okay. you can pour. So, for example, if my if my audience all ten of them cannot pour at the end, mm-hmm. as a trainer and a draft master, I fail. Okay. So yeah, that <laughs> was very very scary because you know, uh, number one, I mean, on the international scale, you know, you're dealing with people from all walks of life, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, content delivery and and presentation is really key in them. So okay. yeah, so we were celebrating all the way back here. Huh. Mm-hmm. So how are your your Participants. Um, it. I, I had about uh, six uh, uh, bar bar staff uh, okay. from uh, a few random bars in uh, Amsterdam. Mm. Uh, there were there were another four judges. Uh, two from uh, the uh, two from US and the other two uh, f- were from uh, Japan. Okay. So yeah. So basically, uh, during that that uh, course, we had to, I had to coach every single one of them on how to pour a perfect Heineken. Uh, was it like an on the spot thing or? Um, you... we we had uh they they gave us the uh the course uh, content which mm-hmm. we had to go through like for the first three days, mm-hmm. and the last day was during our final exam. So that is okay. when we uh, randomly assigned um, people who have mm-hmm. no idea about the brand, and you're supposed to uh, teach them how to pour a perfect Heineken. Okay. So my last question for you will mm. be, 
do you intend to open your own brewery in the future? Oh, my own brewery. Well, <laughs> uh, your own beer. Uh, well, considering uh, <laughs> the market factors in this country, um, mm. I, I think I'll just keep it to the to the two brewers in the country first. Okay. Yeah, but uh, if we're talking about uh running, you know, a bar or a restaurant or something on a on a more uh, mid mid scale, mm -hmm. yeah, perhaps one day I think you know it will be. It, I would like to give something back to the industry. Okay. You know, because I think I've like taken so much and I've learned so much, right. and yeah, it's it's about time to, to give spread. back yeah. to society. Uh, yeah, to the bar society, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so do you have any advice for young people who are trying to to be like you? Maybe young people trying to, to be like me. Okay, well, uh, the first thing I would say is uh, they have to really, really understand uh, uh, where they w where they want to go. Um, it can be in this industry or in, in anywhere else, but mm -hmm. it's specifically if it's something like what I'm doing, uh -huh. they would really have to carve out their own role Okay. Because it's it's very hard to I mean it's not it, you know it's it's not a role which is uh, uh, which has been in existence for years. Right. So you know when there are new rules popping up, you need to find where is that next growth driver, mm -hmm. and just go for it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Keith, for joining us this morning. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, we had a great chat. So uh, if you want to listen to this interview again, uh, stay tuned to DorianAsean dot com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. So see you in a bit.